Hi there, today I wanted to do some logic puzzles with you. At first glance, logic puzzles might look pretty simple. Really, all we're doing is trying to figure out the value of each symbol. But in reality, there is so much mathematical thinking incorporated into these. I find it so exciting and kids are thinking in so many different ways. Um, so today what I wanted to do with you is just go through two of them and kind of show you the, the parts of mathematical thinking that you can pick out and really emphasize for kids to make these easier and more fun. So first of all, uh, I'm doing two puzzles from the addition to 100 package. This may or may not be a good fit for your students. If you're working with younger students, I recommend beginning easier than these so that they get the hang of them. Um, remember that just because your students might be working with numbers to 1,000 or even 10,000 in class doesn't mean that they will have success with the puzzles that work to 1,000. There is, um, there's a lot in these puzzles and even the addition to 20 might be sufficient for some of your kids who are working with numbers to 1,000 or 10,000 in, in other areas, just because of all the different ways of thinking inside these puzzles. And you'll see what I mean right away here. Okay, so I always tell kids we have to start with what we know. So in this case, we could guess these numbers, um, what we could subtract to make 23, but that's just a guess we don't know, so we have to start with the middle numbers. Now you will likely have some kids that just try to do this by trial and error. So, you know, just kind of adding three random numbers and to see if they make 63 when we add them up. Obviously where we want kids to get is to a place where they realize that this repeated addition, we can relate that to multiplication and division. Um, in this case, we want kids to realize that if we just did 63 and divided it into three equal groups, that will tell us what the value of the trophy is. So in this case, it's 21. Okay, so now we know the value of the trophy. The next line that we want to do is the very top line to figure out the value of the flag. Now this is a fantastic way to teach kids about inverse operations, how addition and subtraction work together. So we know that something subtract 21 equals 23. Now again, you might have some kids that just try to plug in some random numbers, trial and error, um, you know, put random numbers in here and see if it works to make 23. Clearly that's not the most effective way to do this. Where we want kids to get is to the point where they realize that 23 plus 21 is going to give us this number. However, this thinking is a little bit too abstract for some of your students. And I'm going to show you the model that really clears it up. If you have not used part part holes with your kids, I really encourage you to introduce these models. They can take abstract thinking and make it just a little bit more concrete for your kids. So we have the hole on top, we've got the parts on the bottom. What do we know here? Do we know the whole or do we know the parts? Do we know one part? In this case, the whole is our unknown. We don't know that part. We do know the two parts. We know the part that we took away was 21 and we know the part that we have left is 23. Now, it becomes really clear that to figure out the whole, we're just going to add these two parts, 21 plus 23. So our whole is going to be 44. Okay, so now we know the flag, we know the trophy. Now we just need to solve for the shoe. So we know that something, subtract 44, is going to give us 30. Some of your students who are already understanding the inverse relationship between addition and subtraction will easily see that all we need to do here is 30 plus 44 to give us 74. Other students, I can almost guarantee you, you will have a couple that are going to say that this is 14 because they're a little mixed up with the order of the numbers. If you have kids that are making that error or, or um, who have that misconception, the part part whole is a great way to, um, to fix that. So again, what do we know? We know the part that we took away was 44. We know the part that we have left is 30. We do not know the whole thing. We don't know this number. So now it becomes clear that this is not 14. This is the sum of 44 
and 30, so this is 74. Okay, so this is where we want students to get. Might need a little bit of guidance to get there, which is completely okay because uh, these, are, these are tricky. Okay, now I'm going to show you one other type of puzzle that's included in these packages and a good way to help students solve it. Okay, one like this, we have two potential places where we can begin. We could begin with the first row because we know that um, we're using doubles facts or we could begin with the third row. Either way, we know that we, uh, the Jeep is 11 and this person is a 19, okay? So now we've got to solve that middle row. So we know that 11 subtract something plus 19 equals 25. Okay, this type of question, is, uh, it's really, it can be very confusing for kids. So here's what I like to tell them. I like to say, let's pretend that this has just one value. Okay, let's just try to figure out the value of that big rectangle first. So using inverse relationships, we know that we could do 25 subtract 19, which gives us six. So we know that the value of this rectangle has to be six, okay? If you are using the part part whole method, which is a, which I recommend as a starting point, um, we know we've got, what do we, what do we know? Do we know our part? Do, do we know our whole? Well, we know our whole in this case. We know that the whole is 25. We know one of the parts that we're adding is 19. We do not know this part, right? So we'll put, and now it becomes, um, we'll put a question mark there. And now it becomes easier to see that uh, we can do 25 subtract 19 to make this part. We can do 19 plus what to make 25, right? So in this case, it's going to be six. And now we need to figure out something else. So now we know that this piece is six. So 11 subtract something equals six. Most of your kids will probably be able to figure out that that's a five, but if not, let's look at how we can solve that. Using a part part whole, we know that in this case, our whole is 11. We know one of our parts is six. We do not know this part, so we just need to figure that out. We can also think six plus something equals 11 and count from there if we're struggling with that. So now we know this has to be a five. We can fill in five there. And now we just check 11 subtract five is six plus 19 is 25. We know we've done it correctly. So these are two different uh, puzzles out of the addition to 100 package. I hope that these approaches have helped you a little bit. If you can help your kids get thinking in different ways, um, there's just so many benefits that come out of these. The introduction to algebraic thinking, the understanding of operations, inverse operations, how we can use addition, multiplication, division all together. There's just so much wonderful thinking that comes out of these. So I encourage you to especially introduce the part part whole and, and then anything else, any other mathematical conversation that comes out of it is fantastic. All right, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.